Hey everybody and welcome to the 1224 podcast. I'm Kate and I'm Shay and we're here to talk to you about everything animation. So it's November. We know what that means. All right if if you know what I mean and you know and I know what you mean let's just say it at the same time. Okay. All right in three two one. Celebrating the millions of deaths of many people in America's history because I don't know Christopher Columbus showed up, but yeah, Thanksgiving. That's, that's another also thing. true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, fuck Columbus, bro. Yeah, fuck him. We don't like him. Yeah, fuck those colonizers. Yeah, we hate it here. America messed up. Damn, let's leave. We're ending the podcast right here, right now. Yeah, so thanks for listening to 1224 Podcast. I'm Kate. And I'm Shay. And we'll see you next time. Just kidding. We're here. We're back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we forgot to lock up, man. We're, we're, keeping, we're keeping the door open because we're going to talk about something else that doesn't praise Thanksgiving, but more so is like, hey, here's a thing that came out in November. And that is Over the Garden Wall. Wow, I love that show. There's a garden, there's a wall, and they go over it. They literally do, actually. (laughs) Yeah, but it's more, like, sad than that. Um, (laughs) Yeah, it really is. Uh, (laughs) It's such a good miniseries that came out in Cartoon Network five years ago? About five years ago. We're old, so, like, time doesn't matter. Oh, God. (laughs) <laughs> like totally at not all. thinking about that totally not like thinking about how this show came out five years ago and now i'm just like crazy <laughs> yeah i mean look we're both getting old kate it's okay you know i mean That's true i'm slowly accepting the fact that like i don't know my teenage years are like almost up like it's, it's very close it's very scary actually i'm like staring at a 19. calendar right now <laughs> uh-uh. we may be um, adults but we're still in our teens technically <laughs> why do people say 19 year olds are adults we're all stupid like Honestly, every single though, one of us we're all just stupid there's too much hope in our generation anyways <laughs> so what's over the garden wall about kate huh Wow, you're asking me? Putting me on the spot? Yeah, I mean, if you don't want to explain it, I'll explain it. I can explain it. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, Over the Garden Wall uh, is about these two stepbrothers, I believe. They're brothers, basically, named uh, Wirt and Greg. And uh, they get stuck somehow in this place called The Unknown. And they, they're just trying to get home. That's that's literally it. Uh, it. They're just trying to get home because they're they're just lost. Uh, it it's ten episodes, so it's a pretty easy watch. I literally just watched it yesterday, just for this episode. But I literally watch it like every year, just because it just has that like fall vibe. Like I watch it. I usually watch it in October, just because like part of me feels like it does give a Halloween vibe, and there's like it kind of takes place on Halloween. And there's just a lot of dark themes within the show. You know, I watch it every year, whether if it's with my family or my friends or people. But I'm I'm not ob- obliged to, like, watch it specifically on October. Um, because I think I know a certain person who would watch it in November and is very passionate about it. Yep, that's me. I am. <laughs> Look. It's not that I don't think people can watch in October. I just think if they watch in like early to mid October, they're kind of weird. Especially if they say don't they don't watch in November. That's kind of weird. Not gonna lie, it's not. A, it doesn't feel like a Halloween thing to me. Um, yeah, I guess for con- yeah, like I'm a person who's very picky about when I watch things in general. Which like you know some of them make sense, but other things people will like argue with me about. Most notably, Night Before Christmas, because I never watch it on the two holidays most people watch it, so... Uh, you watch it in November, right? Yeah, I watch it in November, but I would also watch it during the summer. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so... Huh. That's a take. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Over Garden Wall is, like, a very, um, for me at least, a very strict um, November and Thanksgiving thing. 
um, just because it aired in November, and so I already have, like, this issue, like, I have to watch this in November, and also, like, again, doesn't really give me Halloween vibes, like, the most Halloween vibes it gives me is honestly, like, the second episode, but even then, I wouldn't say it's, like, Halloween vibes, it's, like, Harvest Festival, you know, and also, it's, like, I don't know, saying something scary, you can only watch around, like, October, feels very limiting because like thanksgiving is honestly the scariest holiday of them all wow when you put it like that that that's something to think about (laughs) yeah i mean like do what you want i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna judge you (laughs) but do what you want i don't care i care a little i think people should be open to watch it in november yeah i feel like there's i feel like people are a little too close-minded about only watching october i think that's my (laughs) i'm just like yeah why you know what? I think I'd watch it in both months. Yeah, like, if you watch it in both months, <laughs> like, you're okay in my book, you know? It's just, like, if you limit yourself so much to it, I don't know, like, it's... Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. It's such a good show, just overall. I mean, uh, the creator of Over the Garden Wall is Patrick McHale. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to get into that biz, but uh, still would love to support the other people was, like that did the show and uh, made into a very special miniseries that I really like. Um, and I think it's one of the, like, first miniseries, I think, on Cartoon it Network? Is, it is the first one. Crazy. At least the, if, and if it's not the first one, it's definitely the first one to get that much of a big promotion yeah. for it. I'm pretty sure it's the first one, though, because, like, it's like, they really emphasize that it was a miniseries. A lot of Cartoon Network history. It's like some things people argue are mini series, like within a series, but like I think Overgarden Wall is the first is definitely the first like big mini series from Cartoon Network. And it kinda of started their train right. of like doing mini series. Like at least releasing one every year from what I understand. Because yeah, because the next year they released um Long Live the Royals, which didn't do as well. I like the series, but like I know I like the series. I yeah. wish I wish they did something about that. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind to get yeah. like a few more episodes out of that. But um, but yeah, it was like a big event. I remember, I remember, I remember that too. It lasted a week, which is usually how the miniseries go. It lasts a week, so every night at a specific time, you would watch two episodes because they're like fifteen minutes. And I remember every time it was either that I watched them every night or I watched them the next day because they're available on demand for me. So I don't remember my schedule at the time, but um, it was a very fun experience. Um, towards the end, trauma, but that's okay. Very big. Because what is a holiday without some sort of some sort of trauma? You know? Yeah. Like, exactly. Yeah. That's always fun. I I really I just remember when it came out. I I think it's such a really special show just because it not only like opens the door for like new miniseries and you know like different types of like animation to like come out for for like i guess not mature audiences but like broaden that umbrella of audiences um also Mm -hmm. just because like i remember watching it like the for the first time with my brother either with my brother or like both of us were just trying to race who would finish it first because i think we didn't watch it when it aired but we definitely watched it on like on demand or something because we were like, Oh my God, this new show, we have to watch it because we were both so like obsessed with cartoons back then. Now he just watches anime, but like it's fine or whatever. Um, But yeah, like it's, it's so wholesome, but you know what happens like within the series, you know, a lot of dark stuff and trauma, but like, that's what makes it good. (laughs) Yeah. I, my experience of watching Oregon Wolf People, so there's mainly like two distinct ones. So one, um, I think a year or two after it first aired, I watched, I made my dad watch it. He loves the show. Um, oh it's really gosh. funny. Oh. Okay, because here's the thing about my parents and like my whole family in general. We don't like watching things together, right? We hate watching things together because um, we always end up talking during like the show and then we start pausing it for like an extended amount of time. And also, my dad asks a lot of questions that will be answered in that episode. (laughs) Me and my parents don't watch it together every year, but, like, when it's certain episodes, I call them in. 
So my dad, he only cares about the frog. He doesn't care about them kids. Just the frog. You know, that's that's valid. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't care about them kids. So he's just like, yo, I like the frog because the frog sings. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, my mom likes coming in on the episode where the um, school teacher has like the marital issues. Yes. Because she thinks the song is funny. And she's, and then, <laughs> and she's like, this lady needs to get her life sorted. And then she dips. My mom listens to the song and she dips. So that's my experience of watching it. My other, <laughs> that's all. Yeah. My other experience um, was watching it with friends last year. Yeah. Which was really cool. Me included. <laughs> yeah. Kate's my friend, if people haven't noticed. <gasps> oh my um, gosh, we're friends? Yeah, I never say that out loud. Um, so... <laughs> That's, She's ashamed of me. I'm not ashamed. She's embarrassed. <laughs> no, but uh, like, but yeah, so like this year mean. I'm watching it alone. So uh, yeah, that's fun. But um, Same. but yeah, that's my experience. I don't know. Over Garden Wall is like a cool show to watch with people because like it really is. Yeah, and you can also watch it alone. Like I watch it alone basically every year, except last year, and like. I'm fine. I turned out okay, I think. Probably not. But, you know, it's cool. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a very easy watch and really quick. So quick. So, yeah, so quick. for real. I guess we should talk about characters. Oh, yeah. Should we talk about the big gnome in charge? The big gnome in charge? Yeah, the big gnome in charge. You mean the pushover in yeah, charge? Yeah, the fucking pushover Shorter? asshole. Call, named Wart? Yeah. Like, what kind of name is that? Always Wirt. threatening to leave his brother behind. <laughs> like, yeah, Wart. <laughs> Let's talk about Wart. This man. <laughs> Wart's a teenager. Of course he is. That's, that makes sense. Yeah. He's an emotional teenager. He plays a clarinet. He writes poetry. He whispers poetry at night. Yes. <laughs> at night. And most importantly, he's just he just wants to get out of the woods, which is valid. I wouldn't want to be in the woods. Weird shit happens there. But um, Wirt as a character is very interesting, especially throughout the journey of, like, the show, which is, of course, a good thing, because he is, like, the really big main character out of, like, him and Greg, to be honest, because you, I feel like you see more of, like, his brain, like, brain process than Greg's, right? I call him, like, he's like a blank slate character, right, where, like, the audience can kind of tap into him in order to understand things, right, in the in this absurdist world. A lot of his actions throughout the show, while he thinks he's doing the right thing, right, guess what? He's not. He's being an asshole whole time. Like, even the first episode's pointed out at the beginning with the woodsman, voiced by Christopher Lloyd, of Cyber Chase fame, because I don't know people. So, um, <laughs> like, the woodsman, like, because we're, like, was like it's all greg's fault like greg messed this up he led the person here with his fucking candy and then like the was like no you're an older brother like own yeah, up to you your should shit. be responsible for this yeah it's true because like throughout the whole series be prepared for like work to kind of blame greg for everything until a certain point like you see him slow you see the gears slowly turning in his head very slowly but like where it's not a bad character though i'm mean, describing like he's like a complete asshole but like He's like a subtle asshole. Yeah, or, yeah. That's what I really like about that. Where it's very cynical. He holds a lot of pride for himself, but he's still very awkward about it. It's yeah. like, it kind of reminds me of Dipper Pines, but older, like teen. He's more subtle in a way that like, oh, it makes sense as to why he's like this. Or, you know, he acts this way to like, you know, not reveal like, how actually awkward he is or how embarrassing he is to himself and like how insecure he is and you know like now that i'm thinking about it he he puts he puts the blame on greg but then that just makes him child even more childish than greg and then that's what he kind of like goes through like this like growth of like maturity that you see throughout the show Wow, that's, like, really, like, mind-blowing. Yeah. Like, in terms of his character. Like, he has all these flaws, but that's what makes Wart such an interesting character to look at. Yeah, I think also, like, just in general, with his writing, too. Again, it's he's an asshole. It's, like, it's like the way he does it, it's, like, very subtle, quote-unquote. 
like not sold to the audience really you wouldn't say Wirt's a bad person but you would yeah. say at this point of his life he's making a lot of like stupid decisions in a sense right I don't know how to explain it like it's he's just written like a yeah. teenager like straight up straight up yeah it's <laughs> like when I when I was rewatching, I was like Jesus Christ I would have kind of acted like Wirt a few years ago maybe right and even then like I, I think like when I first watched it I was like He's blaming Greg a lot for some stuff that I just didn't think Greg needed to be blamed for. Right. Exactly. Also, because Greg is so young, too. But then again, I was yeah. like, I don't know if it's because I don't have siblings. Greg is baby. Yeah, I don't have any siblings. So, like, when it comes to sibling stuff, I don't completely understand it. Like, I understand to an extent, because I have, like, a lot of cousins, right? But, like, I can kick my cousin out of my house and tell them to never come back. Well, with siblings, you can't <laughs> just have to stick with them really like yeah. you're stuck with them exactly and i think that's like kind of like the same situation that we're and greg are going through i mean obviously i have a sibling myself we're only like two years apart so we don't really like fight a lot but yeah like i definitely can see that dynamic between the two brothers yeah and of course like there's the extra stuff too with like work and greg they're not i never remember their half siblings or step siblings that's the thing i I feel like I read some of their half brothers though. I have no idea. I'm gonna look it because up because I I remember like Wirt talking about like having the stepdad, and then that's that's where where it's like yeah, and then he came into my life. Points at Greg. Uh, <laughs> oh, like I guess it's like a whole Drake and Josh situation. Yeah, like oh yeah, they're they're half siblings because it's like the mom remarried and gave birth to Greg with his stepdad. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, that makes sense. Okay, so. Wirt has a stepdad and Greg has a stepmom, but they're half brothers. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Gregory, let's talk about Gregory. <laughs> yeah, Gregory, love that kid. I love that kid too. He he's adorable. I would do anything for that kid. I when we watching it, because okay, I remember how like kind of dark this show is. I never forget how dark this show is. Like, but like I keep, I guess like whenever it gets to, like the end of the series, because. Okay, so Greg is, like, very happy-go-lucky. So, like, again, to compare to Gravity Falls, he's, like, the Mabel, right? Yes. Basically, out of the two of them. He's very happy-go-lucky. He's very positive. Throughout the whole series, too, which, like, really, like, floored me. Because that kid has an overabundance of optimism. For real. It's, like, up there. Even, even better than mine. Like, in the face of danger, he's like, oh, hi. <laughs> yeah, no, like, near the end of the series, he's, like, about to die, right? <laughs> right. Oh, my gosh. Bro. Like, that, that's, oh, my gosh, that's so crazy. Like, you see, you see this, like, type of innocence that Greg has throughout the whole, like, series until you reach the end where, like, most of his innocence is, like, gone when he finally decides to, like, sacrifice himself. And even then, it's, like, he's still, like, very optimistic, because the reason why, so, basically, at the end of the series, um, there's this, so, by the way, there's this evil thing called the Beast. Scary. The Beast. And so, basically, the Beast, like, turns, like, children to trees. That's all you need to know. Yep. Yeah. So, like, that's all he does. Basically, they're trying to get away from the Beast, and, like, like, Greg is, like, you know what? I'll sacrifice myself, right? while work sleeping so then work can go home which also like mm. with that too it kind of shows like the consequences of work's negativity too because like yeah. the way greg like the greg isn't like i, I fucking hate work and stuff and he's not like i hate myself but he is he does believe that like a lot of reasons why they're in the force is his fault because work would say yeah. things like you know like if you haven't done this one thing, we wouldn't be in this particular situation. Not like the whole situation of them getting lost in the woods, but like in the situations that happen in each episode. Even before they yeah. go over the garden wall. <laughs> uh, you mean, you mean yeah. When they fell into a fucking train when track they and then <laughs> fell into the water, the frozen oh, water. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, I'm just getting flashbacks. It's okay. It was like... Is it really a garden wall if it's in a graveyard? Probably not. I mean, there there's plants, so maybe you can call it a garden. Maybe? I, I don't know. It, it's fine. It, <laughs> I have questions. They go do they just go over a wall? Yeah. Over over the over the graveyard wall. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, like 
Greg, you can tell he internalizes a lot of stuff, and so he wants yeah. to be better, which, like, I think is such, like, a very interesting way to take his character, it too. It really is. Because... Especially as a kid. Yeah, he's like a young child. He's not even 12. I don't think he's 10, to be honest. I think he's like... I don't think so either. I'm pretty sure he's like 8. Because he's really short. Like, compared to all the other kids, too. He's like pretty short. And then, like, he has a very, like, a higher pitched voice, too. He's voiced by actual child, too. <laughs> the accuracy. Yeah, no, like, I, I love... I love when, like, cartoons, like, actually... Like, about children. They actually have children voicing. Because I feel like there's an authenticity to it. Yeah. That, like, you can't really capture with, like, adult voice actors doing voices. I think, I'm trying to think of, I think Clarence, I'm going to bring up Clarence later again. Um, Or I can bring up now, I don't care. But, like, I think Clarence kind of does a good job with that. Because, like, I feel like the writing Clarence is strong enough to really, like, help emphasize the whole childlike aspect of it. Right. But I... I, I just really like when um, shows, like, actually have children voice. Like, in Hey Arnold, I think they do they do that in Hey Arnold. And it's so good. It it really brings a lot of realism to, to like, the character and show in general. Um, it's funny that you mentioned Clarence because Over the Garden Wall and Clarence are, I guess, technically connected. Yeah. No, that's what's <laughs> going to bring so, up. Which is so, like, mind-blowing. <laughs> yeah, like, at the end of Over Garden Wall, they have, like, a um, kind of, like, a bird's-eye view of, like, the town that Wirt and Greg live in, and it's literally the same town as Clarence. Yeah. <laughs> which I think is funny. Um, cause also, it's so crazy. Yeah, also, Overgarden Wall has, like, this ambiguous time period thing going on with it. When you first watch it, you're like, oh, this can take place anywhere, but there's, like, a lot of, like, 19... I would say, like, early 1900s influence, to yes. be honest, like, with how, like, everything's framed. Like, I would say, like, 1910s maybe like but it's like very countryside stuff so it's like even more ambiguous like you say 1800s too because i've seen some people debating that but turn of the show really takes place kind of in the 80s because like because like the um mix i can see that yeah no it's because like he very emphasized like the mixtape type thing and also like if you look at like the clothing choices for all the characters it's like very 80 centric yeah like, like who's gonna give someone a mixtape like an actual physical like mixtape <laughs> in like i don't know 2015 i feel like wart would still do that. he would do that but like <laughs> at the same time it's like in the show it's just treated as like normal right exactly because like jason's like we're gonna listen to this later right jason yeah i don't, I don't, I don't like him jason funderburger yeah <laughs> hey hey you want to know who's a character who's really funny and i always forget how funny she is until like i watch it again who i think i know who you're talking about oh no some bird named beatrice i love beatrice she's my home girl i do anything for her beatrice she's okay she's a bluebird and yes. she used to be human <laughs> go on she used to be human and basically her whole thing she just wants to transform back into human into a human and like help her family to transform yeah, back into humans. Yeah, because they're also bluebirds. Yeah, cuz she threw a rock at a bluebird like an idiot. So she cursed her whole family. She was cursed. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, Beatrice I think is the funniest character, but then again, I'm the same person who like my favorite character from Total Drama is um Noah. So like you can kind of see why I think she's fun like the funniest I character. I can see that. Yeah. Like I can see that now. Yep. She's very sassy. She's very selfless, headstrong, smart. You say selfless? Like, selfless in a way... No, wait. Not the word selfless, like the meaning of it, but more like... Like, she... If if something... If something... If shit's going down, she's gonna dip. So... I don't think selfless selfless is, like, the right word in that case. Yeah, I know. That's why I was like, wait a minute. (laughs) She's selfless, like, at the end of the series oh, definitely. i feel like, like she's definitely selfless when it comes to like her family and yeah. then like the whole re- but like she's not selfless towards the boys until like the very end oh yeah definitely she she she's not <laughs> she's not with she's like yeah i don't know these boys whenever like whenever they're in trouble she's like yeah i don't i don't know them i'm gonna leave yeah now. she's like bye i don't care like <laughs> <laughs> i'm out i think her insulting work I think also helps kind of balance the fact that like Wirt's act like with Wirt's action too. 
like they're both like honestly so they're both like around the same age right something like that they're both assholes um but i think that's what but they- in totally different like spectrums i feel like. yeah like beatrice is more outwardly like like she told she told someone to die <laughs> in the show so- <laughs> like straight up um <laughs> I forget who she told to die. She told someone to die, and then, like, um... Yeah, I'm totally blinking out on what she... Like, I feel like she she would say that, but I'm just trying to remember, like, when... It was either an episode two or episode three. Yeah, like, she's more, like, upfront about stuff than work. Because work, yeah. like, work will dance around things and, like, not acknowledge his own faults. Well, Beatrice is like, I am an asshole, and I will be the asshole, but also, you're a pushover, and you suck work. Oh my gosh, just the dynamics between Wirt and Beatrice is so powerful to me, just because of the fact, like, of how they kind of, like, sort of formed this, like, interesting bond that they had throughout the whole series, and then, like, just rewatching yesterday was so crazy to me, just because of how much, like, both of them were, were like, you're ugly, shut up, to each other, but in totally different ways, but, yeah. like, you know, just slowly over time, you can see the way that they're slowly just warming up to each other and, like, needing each other. Um, more more so, like, in a friendship way. Because, yeah. obviously, like, you know, people want to ship. But, like, I don't know. I see it, but, you know, obviously I want to keep things platonic at the moment. But, yeah. Um, yeah, just their relationship in general, you can see how close they become by the end of things. But also, like, the conflicts between them... Like, for example, just specifically when uh, Beatrice goes to Adelaide, which is the, like, magical lady that was supposed to help them get home, and that's mm-hmm. why they ended up, like, you know, all three of them, Greg, Wart, and Beatrice, just trying to, like, like help each other to get home, where it feels, like, betrayed after seeing Beatrice with, like, Adelaide without them. You could see that, like, broken trust between them before we see the ending. But yeah, I just thought it was really interesting. Just They're like foils of one another. I think that's why it works so well. Yeah. Because again, so we're told thing, he's like, I just want to go back home. But it's like more, his thing is very like, more so a selfish reason. For sick. He's like, I just want to go back home, right? Well, Beatrice is like, I'm on the hunt because I have to like, help save my family. And then like, but at the same time, you can kind of see how like, their lives like kind of parallel in a sense to think especially near the end also like um also all that adelaide business and for what for her to die to adelaide we see her for like three minutes and then she just dies <laughs> yeah no Rip. like for every, <laughs> well, adelaide, again adelaide's this witch and like it's like oh she can solve your problems but she really just wanted like work and like greg to be servants right yeah not even indentured Uh-oh. not even indentured servitude Mm-mm. child labor just straight up straight up and so like it was just like when i was watching it because like i always forget about adelaide but i remember the song right and so i'm watching like the fact that they hyped her up so much just for her to die because beatrice <laughs> just for her to just did yeah just because beatrice opened the fucking window open funniest thing ever like that makes sense because she only appeared for one episode but they they just kept talking about her before beforehand like even even just in different previous episodes yeah like there's a whole song about her to adelaide, to adelaide. Um, oh my gosh oh my- the soundtrack is so great wait yeah um, anyways but yeah those are the main <laughs> characters you know and the beast all you yeah, know again the beast the beast just wants to turn he just wants to turn children into trees more like old soul like souls that don't that feel lost i feel like yeah everybody's been talking like in the care in the show like the different characters that are like oh the beast they're just like yeah stay away from the beast if you feel lost or if your heart isn't in the right place or something like that yeah why are the two ones that we know got turned to trees children Mm, yeah makes me how fucked up that is so (laughs) emotional it makes me so emotional just thinking about it like out all the like so it's like the woodsman's daughter She's a fucking tree. She she comes back in the end, don't worry. But she's a tree. Yeah. Then Greg's like, I'm coughing up leaves, but that's because I ate them. Why are they always kids? Why are they <laughs> what's happening? Why are they always kids? Tell me, beast. We're gonna fight the yeah. beast. Oh, and then his true form. Oh boy. Oh yeah, it's just that's flesh. Indeed. That's definitely Indeed flesh. That is. 
you see a really good frame of the beast in, by the end of it's it. It's quick. It's really, it's really quick. Yeah. You gotta pause. You gotta, like, hit the space bar, like, so many times. <laughs> Very detailed. Um, oh, why aren't we talking about the best character, Kate? Which best character? Jason Thunderbird. Um, burger, but the frog. Jason Funderburger. The frog. Uh, also, Kitty, Wirt Jr., or Wirt. George Washington. Yes. Benjamin Franklin. Uh, be- yes. There's another <laughs> one. I-, I don't remember it. So many names. The, 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 the goaded. The greatest of all time. Yeah, automatically the best character, because that's my dad's favorite character, which means they're the best character. Aww. In the Hall of Fame with Sheriff Valid. Blood from Gravity Falls. and uh, <laughs> Putting him in the frame. Yeah, and Uncle Iroh from Avatar The Last Airbender. Facts! Those those are the... That's the that's the Holy Trinity or something. Yeah, my dad. He's like, Frog, Blubs, Iroh. Yeah. There we go. Um, that's, such a, that's such an interesting combination. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> okay, so the frog can sing. Yes. Yes, he can. Yeah, and the frog. That's our period. The frog is also kind of like a symbol, like a symbol of like Wirt and like Greg's like um, like relationship throughout the series, right? Because huh. like when you watch, because the show starts in, in it starts in media res, which means it starts technically in the middle of the story, quote unquote. Because you don't learn about how they got in the woods until like the second to last episode. So in the second to last episode, you find out like oh, maybe the the big thing with um. The big thing with the frog was, like, Greg's like, I won't go on a frog hunt. And then Wirt's like, no, fuck you, right? And then um, they find this frog, and, like, Greg specifically says, we need to name this frog for good luck, right? And when does the frog, like, officially get a name at the end of the series? And guess who names him, right? Wirt. Wirt names the frog, what? right? <gasps> And that's yeah. when things start, like, actually start, like, looking up for them. Like, things start, like, going well. Wow. Amazing. I love that. I didn't even, like, part of me was like, oh, yeah, like, the frog, yeah, Jason Funderburger slaps. Like, he's the goat. <laughs> and then, like, you explaining just in depth about how he's, like, a symbol of this, like, unionship that, like, Wirt and Greg have as brothers. Like, it... It seals the deal. Like, oh my gosh, it makes me cry just thinking. Yeah. That. I just love, I love shows with siblings, um, or just like a family dynamic. Yeah, I was gonna say every show has siblings. It's so nice. More only children. You're right. Give me more only, <laughs> only children. Okay, true. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> um, you don't have to give me more only children. I think it's more so if you have only children, stop making them orphans, <laughs> please. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, but like, yeah, you know. The frog, like frogs, are like kind of a big part of the show, which is really fun. Frogs, yeah, yes. There's an episode with frogs, yeah, and that's when Jason Funderburger sings. <laughs> um, he because he also opens up the whole show too. Yeah, and the void. He plays the piano. Yep, in the void. Yes, and like in the void. Oh my gosh! Like the opening sequence is just like foreshadowing everything. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, the opening scene. I wanted to talk about that too. It's so good. Yeah, it's like just clips of characters, like kind of before the mess happens. Right. Because you see Beatrice as a human. Like, if you go in blind, you might not, like, you're like, oh, okay. Like, you kind of put two together with Beatrice. Right. These are random images. Yeah. Like, I didn't go in blind, so I was like, I wonder if that's Bird Girl first time watching it. <laughs> I was like, huh, maybe that's Bird Girl. I don't know. A bird girl. Yeah. Cause I didn't know her name at the time. I was like, okay. Tweet, tweet. Yeah, like, like honestly, watching the opening scene for the first time, I'm like, huh. I never, I don't know any of this. Because, like, obviously, I was, like, in my young teens. And, like, obviously, I didn't know a lot about, like, terms that, you know, people use within their own forms of entertainment. Mm-hmm. And, like you know foreshadowing i was like yeah i know what foreshadowing is but it's not something i'm like analytical about but like obviously rewatching this like every year it's so it's so eye opening and it's just so good i love foreshadows now yeah. i'm obsessed with them even after like the opening sequence like the episodes after that you still hear the theme but then at the end of it you hear a train sound uh, oh yeah and it's so i'm like oh 
because you know what happens. Well, you don't know what happens until you reach to the end of the episode where you're like, oh boy. So that's how they ended up here. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> do you want to hear something really stupid? That I, okay. What? You're going to like, because, okay, I was also facing my friend Kiana, past guest of the show, right? Love her. And like, <laughs> um, it was like, I was watching like the first episode or something, and I was like, I'm so stupid. You don't understand how stupid I am, Kate. I've watched this show like five to seven times now. I just realized the reason why Greg has candy in his pants in the first episode is because it was Halloween. Bruh. <laughs> Shade. That's like... Or like, if I noticed it before... Obviously. I just forgot. Candy pants. Well, because here's the thing also. <laughs> so, whenever I watch it every year now, because Cartoon Network doesn't show it every year. That's the thing. Like, they stopped showing they it. What? Like, at, like, for a week-long event. Which is weird, because I'm like... Cartoon Network Thanksgiving traditions were crazy, right? Um, the one before, like, the whole Oregon Wall special slash miniseries in November thing, which is, I think, the new one, like, the new tradition, technically. Basically, the movie Iron Giant, which I love, they played it for 24 hours straight on Thanksgiving. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, and, like, that was their tradition for, like, years, and then they stopped. And then... I think now, I'm pretty sure now the tradition is a mini series around November because, like, not, it's not like exactly the thing, but like, definitely I've noticed that, like a lot of mini series come out in like late fall. Because, okay, Overground Wall, then Long Live the Royals. Did, did Stakes come out in November? Hold on. I don't know if Stakes did, but I do know that Infinity Train, except for like this past season, because it's on HBO Max now. Because we love and because yeah. we love not making things accessible to like the like the modern person, but um uh-huh. yeah, basically it was kind of a tradition that they have like a mini series because I think Infinity Train Book Two came out around like late November, early December, right? Cause I remember I was home when watching it, but yeah, I think that became their new tradition. Where was I going with this? I have no idea. Oh, I oh <laughs> it's because um basically. I think the reason why I never noticed the whole candy thing is because whenever I watch Overground Wall, because they make it available on, on demand for me, they never release a whole series on demand. It's always five episodes. Like, they split the five episodes. Oh. Yeah, so I don't think about it, really. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're fine. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, that's my stupid corner for today. So, yeah. <laughs> that's why... He Greg has candy in his pants. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, fun times. <laughs> oh, you want to know something I find very cool about the show that we kind of mentioned earlier? The songs. The songs. Mm. Yeah. What soundtrack? Mwah, delicious. Yeah. I'm wondering, what's your favorite song off of it? Because like, what's my favorite song? Yeah. Shit. Oh, man, I mm, I was not prepared for this question because I love all of them. Uh, let me think. Either either Into the Unknown or Over the Garden Wall is what I have in my mind right now. Because I did a cover of Into the Unknown, and it's it's so it's so nice. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I So, my favorites. I, I have a list. My favorite one is honestly Patient in the Night, which is the one where they're digging their graves in front of the um, pumpkin people. Ooh. <laughs> And then, um... That's a good one. Yeah. It, no, it's really good. Like, I remember listening to it, like, last year. It's so, it's so pretty. Then... It does give, like, fall vibes. Yeah. Then I also really like, um... I know you're gonna laugh once I say this. I really like Like Ships, which was the episode of, um, Auntie Wizard. Stop fucking laughing. Stop. Stop laughing. <laughs> I, I'm cool. I'm not laughing. I'm Go not on. laughing. I'm I'm cool. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh my Shay, god. I love you. I love you so much. <laughs> you don't love me. Go on. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> just go on. My, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just probably so confused why we're just laughing about this. I'm not explaining it. I'm not gonna do it. Can I explain it? Or no, it's okay if you if you don't want me to. I'll link. Okay, I'll send you the link. They can watch it. I don't care. It's a video thing. Okay. It's a video thing. We'll put the link in the description below and we'll let you find out what it is. Yeah, it's not even that embarrassed. I don't care. I just don't feel like mentioning it right now. 
Oh, and then it's cute. I also like um. Okay, so I like this song because of good memories. It's the ep- okay. So you know the ep- like the song about the teacher's marital issues, where she goes through the whole alphabet saying why yes. she's sad that her Mm-mm-mm. like husband A is for the apple and gave to, me, to him, and I found the worm inside. She's talking about how she inside. hates this guy named Jimmy Brown and shit. Jim and Brown. Yeah. So like, I like that song, but only because my mom will literally run into the room and start singing it because she's. <laughs> it's such like a <laughs> stupid song. Also in the show, so she goes through the whole alphabet, and, like the re- like the official release, right? But in the show, it's so funny because she goes from A to B, right? And you're like, okay, and then she goes straight to G, and it doesn't even make sense for like the timing. So it's like no wonder your school is like gonna close down because you can't teach the fucking alphabet. You're going straight like you're jumping over letters, right? Yeah, no, I'm just thinking whether or not it was a cut or like to like pass the time or like she literally skipped from B I'm to G. I'm pretty sure she skipped from B to G because like so when I wrote it as it was happening to like right yeah. after G happened, oh I was like God. she skipped. She skipped one, two. She skipped so many letters. C D E F. Four letters. <laughs> Four. <laughs> uh, oh, and... I like the Highway Man song. Bro, the Highway, Highway Man, like, the whole episode's really good. Um, um the Highway Man. Yeah. I think out of that episode, I really <laughs> like, um... I like the one where they're like, oh, you're getting married work? Um, sing, lover, sing! Yeah, it's a lot of, um, alliterative, ri- like, rhyming, which makes it hard to yeah. sing. You want to hear, um... My final favorite song. What? Um, so you know, okay, so you know, of course you know the song Potatoes and Molasses, a menace to society, but it was a good- Potatoes it's a good mess society, and right? molasses. Yeah, so the, the you know the scene where, like, I don't know, Greg's dying. Stop. And, like, we're trying to get him out. Stop. And they're singing, like, the German version of it, like, this depressing German version of Potatoes and Molasses. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, like, um- That's what it is? Yeah, because it's on the, um- it's on the soundtrack, and then also, like... Oh my god, I didn't even know that. Is it that track where the kids are, like, singing yep. while, like, yep. Greg is dying or something? Yep. <laughs> Stop. Yeah, no. And no. I'm pretty sure I thought it's... it was just some random-ass, like, sad song. No, because, like, they were really... It's literally the translation for Potatoes and Molasses. Because Molasses and... No. Yeah, because Molasses sounds similar. And I'm pretty sure it's German, because it doesn't sound like Latin. That hurts me so yeah, much. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's German, because you wouldn't, you wouldn't, like, I don't think you would conjugate <laughs> molasses like that. Holy shit. Yeah, that's why, like, I remember, like, when I realized that last year, I started screaming. Now I'm screaming, too, what? <laughs> I did not know this until Girl. now. This hurts me. <laughs> like, even then, I was like, oh, yeah, you know what? What's even dark, like, you know, the beast, like, I don't know if he's actually singing it, but, like, you hear opera, like, this, like, opera-ish, like, like, song that he's, like, singing because he's, like, literally a metaphor for, like, death or something. Yeah. But, like, hearing that, oh, my God. <laughs> Bro, it's, like, the equivalent of, not the, it's not exactly, I know there's, like, equivalent some. Oh, um, God, there is a show that did this where it's, like, there's a sad version of, like, the um, opening theme playing. There's several examples. I just don't remember what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Every time when a show does that, I either lose my, I lose my mind either because I'm extremely sad or I'm just laughing. But, yeah, that's my last favorite song. I think it's very pretty. Man, now I have to listen to that. Oh, yeah, you can hear it, like, especially the part where they're, like, saying potatoes and molasses. You can hear it. Because they're... Because, oh like, God. that's a bit where, like, no one's really talking either. I'm going to listen to that song. I'm going to think about it and cry for the rest of the night. Yeah. <laughs> Bump the album straight up. I wish I got the chance to get the records, the record version, when it was out. Yeah. Because limited edition, I think. But I can't anymore. Oh, yeah. So. Exactly. That's, like, the same thing with Wirt's, uh tape for Sarah. Wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. They had that? Yeah, they had that for a while. It, well, maybe like a few months. It was like, so they released that, but it was definitely limited edition. Like, you, like there were there were just literally limited copies of that. And it's, there's actual clarinet and poetry. Um, I'm pretty sure you can find it online too, though. Like, just like the audio clips of, oh, okay. like, words, poetry, and clarinet. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Okay, I don't have a cassette player anymore, Which is so I think. cool. Same. Oh, wait, no, I think I do. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Man, you should have bought it then. <laughs> well, I didn't know like, it existed, cause... so. 
you're right it's okay because part of me was like oh yeah i'm definitely gonna buy this but then i was like oh i don't have a cassette yeah. player, so uh <laughs> yeah i'm definitely gonna try and find like the the actual like audio clips because i really love i really love when shows uh have something but then they put it into like physical like copies of it that's like it's like mentioned so like for example for words tape like obviously like it's mentioned it's there and then they bring it to life by like actually putting like poetry and clarinet that was for sarah yeah i i i love when people do that yeah like it it shows true like dedication to your own like creation Mm -hmm. which is really nice (laughs) you want to know what i so one thing i've been wanting for a while um that, like, I'm probably going to get soon, because, like, I'm planning on, like, ordering it. The art of book. Like, the art book for Over Garden Wall. Because, um... <gasps> oh, my gosh. They have a book? I yeah, it, there's a book. Ooh. I'm very excited. So, um, the artwork of Over the Garden Wall is so, so, so good. Yes. Um, so, like, at first... Let's talk about yeah, that. Ooh. At first glance, what character designs... Like, the character designs are very simple, right? And there's definitely, like, inspiration from, like, old 20s cartoons. Especially when you watch... I always get the title of this episode wrong because I always, want, I always want to call it Babes in Toyland, but I know that's not the name of the episode. <laughs> it's the one where everything's pink and there's, it's like, where everything's pink. yeah, it's the one where Greg's like dreaming and that's dream. Okay. Yeah. Like I wrote, I have that in my notes. All I wrote is eighth episode fish and boat Greg's dream slash imagination. Oh my God. And I'm not looking up the title because I always get it wrong. I know it's not Babes in Toyland. It's okay. Don't worry. I don't know the title either. It's definitely like, um, it's like so much shorter and so much more simpler. I know that aspect was very much inspired by 20, like very explicitly. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. But like the whole show in general is inspired kind of like by 20s cartoons from what I know is. I know for um, the Milkmaid in like the Highwayman episode, right? She's inspired. Yeah, she's inspired by Betty Boop, right? Yeah, I could see that yeah, now. Like, like, especially when you, like, hear the way she talks, I think it's more, ob- even more obvious. Mm-hmm. Her voice. Yeah, because she yeah. does, like, the little, like, high-pitched thing. I'm not going to do it because my voice is annoying. But, like, she does, like, the little, like, squeaks, right? And then, um, you know, this is when I don't know. I don't know if this is correct. But Auntie Whispers... Oh, she feels whispers? very Ghibli. Like, that whole episode felt very Ghibli-esque. Oh. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay, now I can see that. Because she kind of looks like, um, like, when they do, like, the witch ladies in a Ghibli movie. So, mm. like, um... The hunchback ones. Yeah, so, like, the one from Spirit Away and then the one from Howl. But especially the one from Spirit Away. Yeah. Because, like, just, like, the way, like, the proportions are, especially. But, yeah, when you first look at the show, you're like, oh, our style's very simple. But you want to know if they make that up for some some nice ass backgrounds. That's what, because like those the backgrounds are very very detailed. Like when you if you ask me about the first thing I think of, like when I think of a scene over the garden wall, straight up I think about this one scene where a leaf is actually like blowing the wind. It's like in the second episode, um, like the leaf is on the twig, right, and then it falls off the twig and it's like. I'm I'm using my hands a lot here, but like basically it twirls around. And it's a very beautiful animation. It kind of leads you into the scene where like Wirt and Greg are walking on this path. And this is Yeah. And also like with the setting and like the color palette's very like very autumnal. This is why I say the show is very autumnal and not really That's a word. I don't know what that means. Um, it means autumn like um Oh, okay. Autumn cool. vibes. Autumnal, okay. Autumnal, yeah. <sighs> Man, I'm so <laughs> Okay, I knew that. I'm stupid. Go on. No, you're not stupid. <laughs> but... You aren't stupid either, but yeah, go on. Uh, it's debatable. <laughs> but like basically the color palette is another reason why, again, bring up a back to me being a weirdo for like watching stuff the color palette's the main reason why i don't like watching it in october personally well because like i understand why it's very orangey but like this this particular vibe i hate that word but like i use it a lot like is definitely more Same. like feels more november-y to me because with halloween i think more purples to be honest like more purples and more like blacks like incorporated. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, like yes, there's blacks. Like especially in the later end of the series, it's like um, 
it's more so just to like for a night like for night scenes versus like in the day where it's very orange while like if i was making it more halloween i would incorporate the blacks in the day scene also more so um and that's my personal opinion it's like a very very muted color scheme but still like very beautiful and like it kind of reminds me of like when i walk through like my hometown um like in some of the parks and stuff and like it's very nice i can hear it's like you know like when you can kind of feel things through the screen and you're like crunch that's crunch. what that show feels like <laughs> crunch um yeah yeah also again like with um the dream sequence too the way they emphasize like the dream sequence is that like they use colors completely opposite kind of because instead of using like those very like there's a lot of oranges and like browns like very like muted it gets kind of bright because there's a lot of pinks and like bright blues and like some purples Mm -hmm. and like i think the show's use of color is very very good oh my gosh now i'm like thinking about that i didn't realize that like it shows like so between the dream and the whole like color scheme and vibe aesthetic Mm -hmm. of the show in general it definitely shows like the uh what's the word contrasting uh concepts between the two between reality and the dream itself Mm -hmm. um i was also wanting to mention like the like obviously the visuals are so beautiful but like at the same time when you look at some episodes i don't know if it's my tv or what but like it's i think the visuals are also just very like foggy and ghost-like maybe like it's very dream and fantasy like sometimes in some like episodes slash shots like Mm -hmm. in terms of the lighting too i feel like um especially what like in the episode when they go to the uh the the old man's mansion or something oh yeah yeah definitely that episode yeah i think they do that definitely sometimes i don't know so much about the fogginess that's why i'm like wait yeah like foggy slash ghost like I don't know. Like Yeah, I know in like that episode there was emphasis on like him thinking there's a ghost in his house too. And it's also kind of like it proves also the theory bec- of that like maybe like you know the unknown is like kind of like a metaphor for Greg and Ward being in limbo just because of like it's also the the Oh yeah, cuz like when you pick up the series again like they like w- wakes up in the ocean. Yeah. And then they go to the hot. Yeah, like I understand that yeah. theory. Like, they're kind of in limbo, and they're like, what the fuck do we do? What's what happening? Heck? Exactly. And the, um, in the sixth, uh, fifth, no, the fifth episode with the, um, the guy in the mansion who thinks that there's, like, a ghost in his house when it's literally just, like, another woman who mm-hmm. are just, like, tea competitors, and they and their man- mansions are so big that they're connected. Like, uh, there's this one shot in the, in the origin episode where, uh, Quincy Epcot, that's his name. Yeah. When they when Wirt and Greg go to the graveyard, uh, his name is on a tombstone. Wait, it is? And that's like, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look, you... I'm not a big theory person, right? Everyone knows that, like, when I start doing theories, they're always, like, really stupid, right? Like, we all know this, right? <laughs> right. Like, Dr. Phil and Steve. It's not even a theory. That's a fact, though. So, like, Dr. Harvey. <laughs> Dr. Harvey. <laughs> Dr. Phil and Steve Harvey is exactly. the same person, like, straight up. But, like, yeah, I, so I don't really look out for clues like that, necessarily, like, when I was watching it. So it's very interesting actually hearing that. Um, um, I didn't even know my first watch. Yeah, like, I literally had to watch videos to see that, uh, like, YouTube videos and stuff, because I'm not that big brain, seriously. I, I literally just, like, look through Tumblr posts and see what other people think and then formulate my own theory slash opinion on it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we need, okay, you know how we've been bringing up Gravity Falls a lot in this whole episode? Yeah. <laughs> we gotta mention how, like, this came out during conspir- peak conspiracy, like, dumbass public, like, <laughs> Everybody time. just going nuts, and Five Nights at Freddy's shit like that, too. Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't really see Five Nights at Freddy's stuff, because I, I wasn't, like, I wasn't in those circles, but, like, I- I was in that circle, oh my god. It's, it's nuts. Damn. Um, it's crazy, yeah. but- it's so like, crazy. Yeah. It, it was just that huge time where everybody was theorizing over every single little thing. <laughs> yeah, especially... Okay, here's why. Gravity Falls caused a disease. A disease. Because here's the thing. Because, okay, 
Gravity Falls, very mystery-based show, of course. And so, like, every little thing was kind of a hint towards what would happen later on. And while Gravity Falls, because it's, like, during a hiatus or something, or, like, about when they're about to, like, get off of hiatus or something, over the garden wall hit. And, of course, this being about, like, a more cynical sibling and a more happy sibling, too, the girlies ate it up. They ate it up fast. The girlies ate it. It was crazy. <laughs> no, it was crazy. You don't understand. I, like, at my middle school, I hate thinking about middle school because it's an awful time in my life, but, like, at middle school, me and my friend, craziness. That was craziness. Then, like, like if you went on, like, Tumblr especially, you would see a lot of fan art of um Dipper and, like, Wirt, like, in, like, these very, like, kind of creepy, like, pictures and stuff. Thing happened. There's also the thing with, like, Wirt and the Beast, because some people are making, like, the Wirt versions of the Beast and stuff. Oh, yeah. Like, different AUs. Oh, my god. Yeah, gosh. bro. Um, that was so crazy. What is it called? Bad End Kids or something? Bad End Friends? Anyways, Tumblr was wild then. <laughs> um, it's dying now. It really was. And, yeah. But, like, you know, it's a new it's Tumblr. A Twitter. Window. Twitter is. It- <laughs> Awful. Hellscape. Hate it. But, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like by the end of the show, uh, you know what? Maybe let me, let me let me backtrack really quick. Like, so before episode 10, the last episode, the ninth episode is an origin of like how they ended up here. Literally, it was all for just because like uh wanted to give this tape to this uh girl that uh he liked. But then he was like, "Oh yeah, I don't, I don't know if I really want to do this." It was all because of some coochie. Is the reason why they end up all all because of coochie. No, look, this is like um, a lot of things I watch. I realize this. A lot of these situations could have just like kind of been avoided, you know. But like at the same time, I understand some of them are right. But like in this particular situation, I sat here, right? I sat there. I was like, "All this for some damn (laughs) mixtape." to get some damn (laughs) mixtape i mean romance is hard man when you really think about it i okay i understand that romance is hard okay but like as someone who is watching a tv show and is overly critical and you know i'm just like i'm being stupid right now i'm sorry but like yeah no it's just funny watching it you're fine this all could have been avoided (laughs) yeah i'm just like you know it's like Um, you just didn't say shit about like the mixtape it would have been okay it would have been okay and that's a rock fact (laughs) bro okay the other thing that like when i was watching especially that one like the prequel episode basically right so you know the part where they're almost about to get hit by a train right yes (laughs) where did they push greg out of the way I just re- I realized that when I was watching. Oh my god! Work just You're right. work just dips. It was I, work just runs away. That's that's how much of a coward. It just dipped. I'm like, you're not gonna save like your eight year old brother. <laughs> Wait, that's so bogus, man. This I don't know. This show is just so written well. Yeah. That I'm like I'm just speechless about it. There's a very good like, especially with the teenagers. There's like very good writing for them. There's a very specific part. It's like the part where like they're like the three teenagers like teasing Wirt for liking Sarah, and then it's like mm-hmm. um, and Kath, it's like what is it like the egg girl says like shut up Kathleen or something like the deliver was really good, yeah. <laughs> like I think the dialogue of like they know how to write their characters the dialogue within wow. their ages really well, like if that yeah yeah like that that makes sense. I mean like. You gotta write uh, good dialogue for the right, like, people in the right age, you know? Mm-hmm. See what, even if they're minor characters or characters you only see one time, it's it's very important to, like, know what these characters are going to say and how they think. Yeah. Um, in order to keep that narrative and that authenticity for the whole story. No, you're good. <laughs> no, like, because I feel like a lot of shows kind of fall into this, like, thing... Where, like, especially, like, with teenagers and children, like, I've seen some rough yeah. writing for those. Like, sometimes people write teenagers more as, like, light adults, which, like, that's not the case. And then, yeah. uh, and then like, with younger children, it, like, depends sometimes. Because, too, it's, like, the function of the child within the show. But, like, usually people are okay. But I think, like, when you watch Over the Guard Wall, all the characters, and they're, like, with their respective age groups, they're written very well. 
Like, of course, Mm -hmm. Greg's the only, like, young child we see throughout the whole show. So, like, but Greg's written, so Greg's written really well, too, I think, just, like, as a character. And then, like, with all the teen characters, so it's, like, we're, Beatrice is a teenager, and then, like, I guess Lorna's whole thing is kind of weird, though. And then, like, the whole, like, Halloween, I think, I just think they're all written so well. Like, even yeah. the adults who are, like, clueless, like, there's, like, kind of a under, like, understanding to it. If, like, yeah, like, an understanding to it. Because, like, okay, you, like, they're all, like, big characterizations, of course. Like, the adults, which I think is very interesting, too. Because you have the teacher who's, like, so, like, oh, my God, my husband is, like, not here. And then, like, oh, with... Jenna Brown. Yeah, and then, like, with, like, um, the tea guy, he's, like, oh, I think there's a ghost. Like, and then, like, the people at the tavern are, like, very, like, I don't want to say animated, because they are animated, but, like, you know, like, in terms, like, personality. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I know think, what you mean. Yeah, I yeah. think it's so interesting how, like, all these adults are kind of, like, I would say, like, borderline caricatures for the most part, but not, like, in a bad way. It's just, like, you can see, like, they're more exaggerated because, like, they're in this kind of, like, weird like fantasy world thing while like Mm -hmm. we're and greg especially are like very grounded in a sense um in terms of writing yeah Yeah. that's so perfect oh my gosh i love the way you said that um that that's that's such a great observation um (laughs) just because like every character just has their own like i wouldn't say trope but like it it seems perfect for the role and perfect for their writing um Mm -hmm. i think also, like, especially with Wirt, oh my gosh, he's such a great example of great, like, dialogue, and just his character is so good. Um, I literally have notes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, like, by the end of it, you see so much development in Wirt, uh, especially through the dialogue where um, he goes to save Greg because he realizes that Greg is the one that's being sacrificed now. Mm. And so, like... Um, there's this line, uh, Beatrice's mom is like, you know, you shouldn't be out in the cold, you shouldn't go out for him, because, like, you won't be good for your brother if you're dead. And and this line where Wirt says, I was no good to him alive either. Bro. I, I was like, bruh, ow. <laughs> I remember watching that, like, for the first time. I, I didn't scream, but, like, I was like, oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. And, and it just reminds you of all the things that Wirt has done to Greg throughout this whole series of blaming him and doing all that, like, you know, stuff because, like, you know, he's a teenager, he's angsty, and then yeah. he has, he has like, problems with uh, his family, and, like, he's like, oh my gosh, why is this kid now in my life? Like, what is going on here? Yeah. Um. But, yeah, like, just, we're just such a perfect example of, like, knowing how to write his own character as a teenager. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. like, when he goes to the Beast, uh, the Beast is, like, super serious. He's like, I'm going to give you this proposal. If you, hold the, if you hold the lantern, if you keep lighting this lantern up, you'll save your brother. And where it's like, okay, no, wait a minute. That's dumb. Bro, I, no, when that scene happened, because, okay, this is why I say everyone in the show, like, all the teenagers are assholes, and that's why it's such a good show. Because there's, like, a bit to you where Wirt's, like, he's trying to threaten, he's, like, threatening to, like, blow out the lantern, not Beast, like, starts screaming. Right. He starts <laughs> screaming, and then, like, Wirt just makes this one face. Like, he's just, like, mm. He's, like, Tch. Like, okay. What a, what a, what an idiot. He's, Come on, Beast. He's just, like, <laughs> he said, why do I have to keep this he's lantern lit? He's, like, why do that's I? Dumb. He literally says that. He's, like, no, that's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> and then the Beast's, like, huh? <laughs> I think that's what makes the show also, like, when I was rewatching it, I was like, this show is much funnier than I remember. Because it's like, they're just saying, yeah. like, little, like, all these Snyder marks, too. And I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Wait. I know. It's so, it's, what makes it so amazing is that they, they choose dialogue that is very, like, authentic, but at the same time is, it's so real. It's something that I would say. Yeah. Like, like a lot of shows dramatize things. And, like, Over the Garden Wall is just a perfect example of, like, bringing the balance between, like, comedy and and seriousness in all one thing. And just the way the way they decided, hey, let's just have words say, no, that's dumb. Yeah, like... <laughs> it fits his character. It fits how the way the story should end. <laughs> it's so great. Yeah, like, I... Again, I think that, like, a lot... I think the reason why people sometimes have trouble writing teenagers, too... 
It's because in a lot of, like, cartoons, there's, like, no parents in them, if people haven't noticed. Like, parents don't exist. Yeah. But, like, um, like, this is a show, you never see their parents. They're only mentioned. Yeah. I think it's, I think that's why I also just enjoy it, because it's like, okay, like, they have no parental supervision, but, like, we're, but, like, with that, right, with a lot of these shows where there's teen characters with no, like, parent figure, right, they act too much right. like adults. That's the problem. And this show works, like, teen, like, literally, like, again, he would say things that, like, I would imagine might, like, I would imagine, like, myself or, like, what my friends would say in a situation. Also, he acted, like, very realistically in that situation, too, mm-hmm. kind of. Yeah. I mean, of course, it depends yeah. on the person. Like, if you're being threatened with, like, if your younger sibling is going to die, right? <laughs> Because they're going to be turned into a tree oh, by some boy. weird beast thing. Everyone will react differently. But the way Wirt reacts in comparison to, like, his whole journey and everything makes so much sense. Because he's just like, okay, mm-hmm. so you're telling me, gotta keep the lantern lit. I don't buy it. I don't see it. I don't see it like that. <laughs> they're all so sassy. I love it. It's just mm-hmm. like. Yeah, I think it's, it's a good point that you mentioned uh, about, like, parent, there's no, like, parents around and i feel like with that choice it's like you know you act a certain way around your parents you know and then you act a a a totally different way when you're not in like parental supervision and it it just really opens the door to really seeing what a teenager is essentially (laughs) which is which is really interesting just a little thing that i was like oh that that makes sense (laughs) yeah yeah i mean over the wall such a great show. Hey, Justin. So I, I hate Jason, though. He can... We all do. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching it with, with Chaz yesterday, mm-hmm. and we were we saw Jason, and we were like, oh, yeah, that's Kevin. Brother. <laughs> all you do is roast that man, and, like, for what? <laughs> because, because he deserves it. Oh, my because God. Because we love him. We do it because we love him. I'm still thinking about the stupid Phineas and Ferb thing that you said the other day. Like, um... Oh, my God. Don't mention <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny okay yeah. shout out to to my brothers uh chaz and kevin chaz isn't my brother technically but i he's see him as a brother yeah he's ferb and kevin is phineas because he he i guess he's big brain but at the same time he's just dumb uh <laughs> <laughs> and chaz is ferb obviously because he's He's also big brain, but also dumb. But at the same time, he's chill about it rather than Kevin. Yeah. Um, and then sh- I told Shay about it, and she gave the obvious reason of why Chaz is Ferb. Yeah. So like, you know how Ferb, he's a step sibling to like Candace and like um, Phineas, right? Oh wow, that dynamic even works too. Um. So yeah, you know, like <laughs> Chaz just shows up at their house. He's not exactly. related, but he's there. He's there all the time, like every day. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, yeah, he he technically lives here now. My favorite um, game is um is Chaz there. That's my favorite like is Chaz game. There. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But yeah. Over the Garden Wall is such a great masterpiece. Even after talking about this, it just makes me love this show even more. Yeah. I I'm going to rewatch it again on Thanksgiving cuz it's like the one consistent thing I can do this year. So, yeah. Go watch Over the Garden Wall if you haven't already. Or if you've seen it many times, watch it again. Yeah, it's on Hulu. Um, and then I think at this, usually around this time of year, Cartoon Network has it on On Demand for Xfinity customers. I do know that. They should. Wow, that's so specific. Well, look, <laughs> they should. Look, I'm trying to, like, when we recommend these things, I'm trying to, like, give people options, you know, yeah. to watch it. I mean, of course, like, you have other options to watch things but like in ways to support it yeah like we're doing legal ways right now so exactly. definitely it's on hulu no ads by the way because it's a kid's show whoop, whoop, no ads yeah so please watch it yeah. legally but like i mean if you don't that's your prerogative good show mm-hmm. very good show <laughs> so good yeah Mwah. masterpiece yeah let us know your thoughts in the comments below about over the garden wall Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll talk about them in the comments if you do comment. Yeah, you guys should comment. That'll be really cool. That'll be really great. Actually, yeah, we like you know? we like talking to people. We do, and we love this podcast, and we love you. <laughs> yeah, or if you're not watching it on YouTube, I don't know. You can like comment on our Instagram linked below. All yeah. our socials are linked below. All our personal. You know socials. it. Yeah. 
if you want to say, <laughs> say dumb stuff, you want to see Kate say something that's profound, I don't know. Follow <laughs> us. That's, that's cool. Let us know. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for listening to this episode of the 1224 Podcast. I'm Kate. And I'm a bird. Then I'll be a frog. We'll see you all later. Bye. Bye.